Hello everyone, thank you for coming to another adventure of the Missy 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 Plane. Yes, we gotta talk about somebody in a messy way, because I just can't believe this woman is doing this thing. We're gonna be talking about, as we're cascading through the clouds above, we're gonna be talking about Portia Williams and in her chapter 10 book, uh, Pursuit of Portia, or the what is it called? The, yeah, the Pursuit of Portia. And she goes in and says she finally felt she made it. Okay? We're, we're, get, we're gaining altitude now. And we're going to be coasting along trying to figure out why this actor that has been out for a very long time. But this particular actor, or maybe this is the only one she met <laughs> that she calls herself liking or adoring or whatever. She said, child, Portia Williams herself said that Samuel L. Jackson had given her, given her the approval of she definitely is a solidified in the business. So that was her gold stamp of him acknowledging her. And she felt <laughs> that she had made it in the world, guys. She, she was one up on the real celebrity list. I'm like, Portia, get the hell out of here. If Real Housewives of Atlanta, being on Dish Nation, and you having your own spinoff, didn't tell you or didn't solidify you in your own mind that you may have made it to a certain degree even though it's ratchetness of course but at least you got your foot in the door and it was due to bravo <laughs> or you know if you were spiritual and you were uh, praying for things like this to happen for you i guess your god delivered to you okay well girl I can't believe. Now, if you would have said Denzel Washington or let me see who else. Um, what was that guy's name? That um, Kevin Costner. Um, hmm. Hell, even Tom Cruise. You know what I'm saying? For a ladder of me not necessarily uh, coming with the bullshit. Okay. Those were some of my... Uh, favorite actors and especially if you got a gold nod uh from denzel washington then you can call yourself doing something okay baby but uh, you you said samuel l jackson and don't get me wrong i liked him in a couple of movies he did the one that i really liked him in was uh a, ki a long kiss good night when he was with this uh i think she's canadian i'm not really sure what her nationality is but a long kiss good night uh, look it up and you'll see um, the actress I'm talking about where she was kicking butt like she was an assassin running around now and um, Samuel Jackson was like her sidekick that she had to save all the time. <laughs> that was one of my favorite movies y'all. I looked at that movie so many times it, it told me I had to get another uh, VHS copy. Oh child but anyway. Miss Portia wrote in her book, I kid you not, she's been on Dish Nation and Crackhead, or I, Head Crack, I meant to say. Um, I, it'll be another, um, hopefully, slide in there. But anybody that's from Atlanta and y'all listen to um, the Ricky Smiley Morning Show or the Evening Show or whatever, uh, D.L. Hughley's on the afternoon show to the early evening, and Portia DeBrad, Head Crack. Uh, Rick and Smiley, uh, Gary with the T, all of them used to be on from the 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. slot. And um, they used to, you know, do like normal radio personality hosts do. Uh, they kick back to the fact, tell you what's happening out there in the news, the sports arena, the celebrity gossip news, and uh, philanthropy type stuff. But child, they were coming back from what she says in the book from uh, taping at Dish Nation in L.A., Los Angeles, California. And they were on the same first class seating that um, Samuel Jackson, who happens to be on that same flight with them. And he was in great uh, deep conversations with head crack. And Portia called herself getting up, going to the restroom. And, you know, she probably was looking good. Her tits was probably sitting up nice. She was probably smelling nice. Her ass was looking nice. And this little man, Samuel Jackson, gave her a compliment. Talking about some, hey, Portia, Portia, trying to get her attention. And she turned around because she said it was a familiar voice. 
And lo and behold, it was Samuel Jackson saying, keep doing what you're doing. I see you, girl. You're doing good. This, that, and the third. And then she's going to call herself. That's when she really knew she had made it. I kid you not, y'all. <laughs> I was like, what? You would want him. And to me, he's not an A-lister actor. You know what I'm saying? He's okay. Um, dog, I wanted the, the who was the guy that played um, with... Um, I can't even think of his name. Ooh, I can't remember. He's an older black actor, too. Salt and Beverly. He played, like, in um, some, uh, um, what's his name? John Gresham book movies. I cannot think of his name to save my life. But if you would have said one of those people, um, I don't know. Well, let's just keep Denzel being a staple of a male giving you a compliment in a um in a pretty much male dominated cinema or um movie role uh, to say, okay, cool, we'll give you kudos that yeah, you don't cr uh, crack. That's head crack I was talking about. Samuel Jackson and him uh, were having a discussion. I don't, she didn't say anything about Ricky Smiley, so maybe he was in his own little world uh, coming back. On the flight with them after taping. Or maybe he wasn't there at all. It was just her and head crack. Because that's the only person she really gives. Uh, any. Um, uh, what do you call it. Validation to what she was saying. That he was there. But yeah. Him and head crack. Me and Samuel Jackson was having a conversation. And they happened. Uh, she happened to like go in between them. But she evidently she didn't notice him. Until uh, he was saying, Portia, Portia, Portia. And then he, uh, she turned around and, and said, uh, oh, hey, Samuel, how you doing? Like, she knew him and they had broke bread, had dinner, had sex or whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Had good sex with that old man. Child, please. But uh, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Yeah, she could have said Danny Glover. And I've been there somewhere with her. Uh, like, okay, you thought, you know, okay, okay. But Samuel Jackson in his own right, in his own catalog of works, body of works he's done in the movie industry. You know, you either like him or you love him or you in between. And I'm like, I'm kind of in between. But that movie he made with, I can't think of her name to save my life. Uh, he was her supporting actor because actor, <laughs> she was the star. But um, I love that movie with them both in it. But it was like a comedy movie, action pack. And uh, she was like a little assassin running around here. But I, I can't. Ooh, G is it Jenny Garth or Jenny? I can't think of it. But just Google A Long Kiss Goodnight with Samuel Jackson. And um, you'll see what I'm talking about. But he was her sidekick. But going on into the uh, particular book on, in Chapter 10. For those who have the book. For those who don't. Don't go out and buy it. It's just a waste of time. Okay. But she goes in to say uh, under Chapter 10. Uh, she's basically talking about she's found her new power, her voice within. Um, she's leaning, leaning to her own understanding and not the Lord at this time, or her God, I should say. She said, um, after I grew into a woman who knew exactly what she wanted, I never encountered another abusive relationship again. If I'm being honest, I still don't know what shifted or what shift happened to break that cycle in my life. But if I had to distill uh, it down into one finite idea it would be that I had finally grown into my power uh, and not only that I grew into my purpose I had people I used to watch on television as a child people I had looked up to people I had admired now stopping me in the street telling me that they were rooting for me I'll never forget the time I was flying back to Atlanta uh, from Los Angeles after doing a photo shoot with my crew from Dish Nation. Ricky Smiley, the brat, Gary and uh, Gary with the T and head crack. We were all in first class when I got up to go to the bathroom. That's when I heard a very distinct and familiar voice say, Portia, Portia. I turned my head and I see Samuel L. Jackson. Inside I was freaking out. Because, duh, this was Samuel L. Jackson. But I tried to play it as cool as possible. He was talking to Head Crack about something. I couldn't hear over the plane's hum, but I pretended to be in on whatever joke they were laughing at. Oh, hey, what's up, Samuel? I said, absolutely thrilled to speak with one of my idols. Yeah, you just keep doing what you're doing. I watch y'all, man. Y'all doing it. Y'all doing y'all thing. And I was like, uh, if 
it was such a brief encounter but it was also an amazing reminder to keep my head down and keep doing the work Sam, I feel like I can call him that now since we're friends. Ha! Reminded me that I'm doing the work and now I'm on the radar. People that I've admired forever, they see me. They see what I'm doing. They respect me. It's just another level of validation that I'm doing a good job. And let me be clear. My power or purpose had nothing to do with celebrity run-ins. It's not about having money or status or fame. It had nothing to do with my grandfather or being on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Instead, it had everything to do with me knowing who I am. Another amazing outcome after my divorce was the growth of my empire. And I'm like, Portia, get the hell out of here. What do you mean your... Uh, accolades did not come from bravo did not come from the housewives of atlanta girl didn't nobody know you did not know nobody know you they know cordia stewart the nfl football player and you were attached to him as his girlfriend as his fiance and then his wife but girl didn't nobody know you until you got on the real housewives of atlanta they knew of your grandfather you write about that in, down here in atlanta and throughout the world if anybody paid attention to atlanta georgia at the time when we were uh doing great things down here for the uh movement but they would attach him to Mar dr martin luther king actually okay baby girl your grandfather wasn't over your, we probably didn't know anything about your grandfather until he actually started the food uh bank here in atlanta but that came after years of active uh activism <laughs> excuse me advocacy work and protesting that he was a part of the train of martin luther king and he was one of his lieutenants he put it back in the day um to help their vision come to fruition but it was Dr. Martin Luther King's dream and what he did and advocated for for the black people. Your grandfather was just an instrument being used as well to help that facilitate things to come into where they were, uh, which made the civil rights movement more successful. But baby girl, you need to stop your bullshit. You did not. You were not known on a high level, such as if you weren't on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, there was no way that uh, this nation would know anything about you, okay? By you being on the Real Housewives of Atlanta provided you a platform, a global platform, to where people know how you and who you are and, you know, where you came from, in a sense. That was your golden goose. That was your golden ticket. And for you to just dismiss it all and say it, you were it. You were the it factor prior to arriving to those accolades is far fetched and vainful and senseless to say. I was like, girl, you will never learn. You will never learn. I mean, take your footsteps, honor them, be proud of them. And then you could say, ooh, once you get to the pinnacle place that you are at, you can look back and see all your stepping stones that made you get to where you are. And you solidified in everything, but you're not an actress out there. You're not playing in movies, you know, at least two of them a year. You're not on any uh, sitcom show that we could see you every week tune in, you know. What you're on is a messy reality show that degrades black women if they let them in very de talk, de, de, <coughs> degrading ways and derogatory at that sometimes. Because they, right now, how they've made you look on um, your spinoff show, I don't see how you can come out and show your face. Really. You know what I'm saying? It was just that horrific. And then you go on these talk shows and you talk of nothing about anything maybe your book but that's you know what we call it uh table talk banter coffee exchange banter okay it's not a book that you really want to go into and find any knowledge or any wisdom out of it's not one of those books that you can grow from no it's, it's not all of that in your book i'm like girl oh 
<laughs> but y'all get down in the comments and y'all tell me what y'all thought about that. Were y'all think thinking um Samuel Jackson was just looking at her gorgeous figure and her body and thinking about he could get with that with his old age, his old self? Or were you thinking he was really giving her true accolades ever as another thespian to the arts that you know he see her potential and she need to keep doing what she doing because he, he he sees that or do you think he just wanted some booty y'all tell me y'all tell me come like oh man samuel jackson trying to tell you i see you i see you he said you on his ratchet ass show custom folks out and getting you whatever and then they can't even talk about your show Poor your family matters they can't even talk about it you won't let them talk about it. And maybe they're doing it to justify, to keep your sanity. That they don't want people to rip into you because they love you that much. And they know it was a hot mess. And you were shown and depicted a hot mess. Nothing positive came out. You're spin off. So, because I show sure waiting for them to say something. But nothing transpired. So, my hopes was that you probably called them and said, please do not talk about it. But on... um. V103 with your friend Shamil being one of the hosts, you want to talk about your relationship with Simon, okay? And that's just a glorified boyfriend and that y'all had moved into Sandy Springs into a, um, a house which has your name not on it, allegedly. And um, what were you else you were talking about? Oh, your book uh, situation. And we already know how that is faring. But I was like, girl, for you to sit there and say none of these platforms that you've been on had made you zoom to start them to where you are now. It's so false. So false and so stupid of you to say that. Okay? But that's just my thoughts, my opinions. Y'all get down in them comments and tell me what y'all think about this situation. Alright? And I will see y'all next video. Bye-bye.